not limited to reindeers and bumbles. Whatever you're facing, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, my God is able. Amen. 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 Christians, we need to get a hold of this and quit living in defeat. We need to quit living in fear. We need to quit living in depression. We need to quit living being beaten down and let the world and the flesh and the devil overcome us. Because everything that's been thrown at us is blind and toothless. We have the power. We have the power. Do you understand that? We are the repository of the power of God. And there is nothing, nothing, nothing that can defeat us. Right. Just trust God. Just believe God. Take him at his word. Look under the hills and see what you have. Look unto God and see what is available to you. Psalm 121. <coughs> this is where we need to be. This is who we need to be. This is how we need to live. <coughs> Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes under the hills from whence cometh my help. Now remember back, that man of God and his servant, they looked up on the hills, they looked up on the mountains, and there's chariots of fire and his angels and his horses of fire, and everything was just in circle and, and waiting to come and help them. You got the same thing. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will take care of you. And you can say, and you should say, and you should live this just like David. I will lift up mine eyes under the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Now listen to this. He will not get it. It's very definite. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Listen. God said I'll be there. I won't let it hurt you. I won't let it take you out. And I'm always watching. It says he will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Same God. Same God. You have the same God. You have the same promise. You have the same guarantee. You have that. That is what's on the hills. That's what you can look to when the trials and the troubles and the problems seem like an army that are mounted up against you. When it looks like there's no hope and it looks like there's no way out. Open your spiritual eyes and begin to look at what God has sent to rescue you. What God has sent to take care of you. And again, I want to make this very clear. I want to make this as crystal clear as I can. It might still be there. That army was still there. You might still be able to see it, and it still might be big, and it still might be scary, and it might be making all kinds of threatenings, and all kinds of noises, and getting you uh, all worked up. But it's ineffective. It's ineffective. God will not let it overcome you. God will not let it destroy you. God will not take, let it take you out. He said he is there. He won't suffer your foot to be moved. He won't suffer you to suffer all these things. He won't let all that happen to you. He is your refuge. He is your God. He is the one who cares for you. The Lord shall preserve you. Now I'm going to ask you something. I know I ask this stuff a lot. Do you believe God or not? Ask yourself, do you? Do we really believe God? I'm going to tell you something. If we really believe God the way we say that we really believe God, we live a whole lot different. We would. We wouldn't go around with our lip dragging the ground. We wouldn't go around with worry lines. We wouldn't go around depressed. We wouldn't go around beat up and down in the dumps. We wouldn't. And I'm not saying 
that you got to skip and sing and, and whistle and all that kind of stuff all the time. But I am going to tell you, if you really believe God and you believe that what he says, I don't care what's going on. That's easy for you to say, Brad. Yeah, it is easy for me to say because I know my God. Amen. No matter what's going on, you're going to have joy. That's right. Listen, remember in Sunday school, this came up. Christ. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross. It wasn't fun to hang on the cross. It wasn't joy to, to be up there and, and be beaten and tortured and everything that he went through. But what was on the other side? And just like that army that I read you, once they had to be scattered, look what they left behind. Blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing. That's why you can have joy because you know your God will come through. That's right. There's a song that says, you'll do it again. I ain't quoting this exactly, but something like this, the song says, take a look at where you were. You were trapped. You were lost. You were doomed for a devil's hell. You had no hope. You didn't deserve anything other than hell. Look where you were. Look where you are now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This same God that brought you from there to here can take you another level. That's right. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. There ain't no stopping. Mm -hmm. As long as you're drawing breath, you can keep going higher. With this God, there is no end. Mm -hmm. He'll do it. He did it before. He'll do it again. Mm -hmm. He brought you through cancer. Is there anything he can't bring you through? Mm -hmm. Sure. He'll do it again. Everybody's sitting here. God has delivered from something. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Might be a physical. Heart attack back from whatever it is God has delivered us all from something might have been spiritual might have been family might have been job I don't know it doesn't matter but he did it and he'll do it again it's not like you only get one guess you only get three wishes my God is limitless endless and he will do it again if we believe him if we trust him, we are so often defeated and brought down because we don't. Amen. Say you do. Go ahead and say it. But if you did, you wouldn't live like that. Right. And again, I'm not saying it's all going away. But I'm saying it's ineffective. Mm -hmm. You might be able to still see it. It might still be growling at you. It might still be making noises. But it's ineffective. It can't touch a child of God. It can't. It cannot take you out. It cannot destroy you because you are his. That 121st Psalm, I will lift up my eyes under the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from God. My help cometh from the Lord. He is the one who will not let these things happen. He won't let your foot slip. He won't let the sun even light on you. He won't let you be destroyed. He won't let you be brought down. He will preserve you. Amen. Jump over to Psalm 125, beginning at verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. They that do what? Trust. Trust God. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be Cannot, very definitely, then the trust God can't be moved. Do you hear what he's saying? He shall be like a, a tree planted by the rivers of waters. The roots go deep and the roots grab hold and though the wind blows and though the storms come and no matter what happens, it stands. That's the child of God who trusts God, who believes God. Sink your roots into the rock, into Jesus Christ and let them get a hold and believe God and trust God and nothing will move you. Nothing. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. He's got you in circle. He's round about you no matter what's going on. He is there to watch and protect and take care of and deliver and do what needs to be done. He is there. 
trust him. Just trust him. You will be victorious. I, I, I kind of don't like to put it this way uh, because there's, there's a movement out there that says you can do anything with this. But listen to me. You need to take authority. Mm -hmm. You need to take authority in Christ. It's not your authority. Christ has allowed you to use his name. Christ has allowed you to use what he has done. And you need to take authority. And you need to stand up. And if you've got to speak it out loud, then you speak it out loud. You will not overcome me because I am a child of the king. You will not defeat me because I am bought and paid for by Jesus Christ. I am one of his own. And you will not touch me. You will not defeat me. You will not bring me down. We need to start living like that, church. We need to start living in that way and overcoming situation and overcoming circumstance and overcoming problem and being victorious and when we do that that brings glory and that brings honor and that brings praise to Jesus and that is who we need to be. Amen. Look I know life ain't easy and we're never promised that it would be and you're going to have stuff. And it's going to happen. And some of it is heartbreaking. And some of it is heart-wrenching. But you can survive it. You can get through it. And believe it or not, it's hard to believe when you're in the midst of it. But you'll come out better on the other side. James said, and this came up in Sunday school, to rejoice when you fall into all these things. Because this is what increases your faith. This is what strengthens your faith. This is what makes you stronger. And once that begins to work in you and that begins to develop in you, James goes on and says, once that is accomplished, if you let it be accomplished, then you are made perfect and entire and wanting nothing. But it all relies on trust. It all relies on faith. We've got to believe God. We've got to trust God. Listen, we got to be as David was. He never lost his confidence. And I don't know about you, but when I read, I try to get into the person's head who was right. And I can just see David was tore up. The, the things that he said and how he described it. I'm in a snare. I'm in prison. I'm overwhelmed. I look around and there is nobody. It's just me out here all by myself. And I'm getting beat and I'm getting beat and I'm getting beat. But God, I know. I know you will deliver me. That's the confidence we've got to have. That's the trust we've got to have. That's the faith we've got to have. And if we would do that, it would help us in the long run. We would become stronger. We would become more of a witness. We would glorify Christ more. We would honor him more. We would lift him up more. If we would do all these things, it would bring the praise and the honor and the glory to him. And not only that, we benefit. And I'm just about done, but I want you to remember this. That army that can pass Samaria and besieged them, nothing got in and nothing got out and they ran out of food. They were dying. They were eating babies. That's getting bad. I mean, talk about having trouble. Talk about having problems. I can't imagine. And I think what I go through is bad. But listen. God said. It ain't going to last forever. Tomorrow. About this time. You're going to have everything. Everything. And God sent those chariots. And those horses. And those angels. To run that army off. And that army was so scared of God, they left everything. Gold and silver and food and raiment and animal. They left everything. And who got that? The people who had once been in the problem. God still works the same. The things in the Old Testament that we see in the physical apply to our spiritual. If you read, Paul says, these things were written for your learning, for your admonition, so that you would understand. 
The Old Testament is a foreshadow of the New Testament. And the Old Testament shows us in the physical what was going to happen in the spiritual, in the New Testament. The things he did there in the physical, he does for us in the spiritual. When we get in those situations and those circumstances and he delivers us, there is a benefit. There is something that we receive. There's something that we gain. So often we don't see it because it is in the spiritual. And we have come so accustomed that if I can't touch it, if I can't feel it, if I can't look on it with these eyes, it doesn't exist. We need to begin, like that servant of the man of God, to have our eyes open so that we can see in the spiritual. Amen. I know. You've gone through problems. And if you ain't going through one now, you will. If you are now, act on these things. If it starts tomorrow, act on these things. They work. They work because God said this is how it works. They work because God said, I will do certain things. I will take care of you if you trust me. Remember the last thing I read there. They that trust in the Lord will not be moved from henceforth forever. They will not be moved. Because just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, God surrounds his people. We are protected. We are cared for. Mm -hmm. We are watched over. Everything ain't going to go away. They're going to come, and they're going to come, and they're going to come. But to a child of God who trusts God, they're toothless, and they're blind. They can't defeat you. They can't destroy you. They can't bring you down. That army, had they not been struck with blindness, wanted to take the man of God and get rid of him. That's what Satan wants to do to you. Do it through situation, through circumstance. He'll do it through the world. He'll do it through the flesh. He'll do it any way he can do it. He wants to destroy you. But my God can make him ineffective. Still there, still ugly, still scary, still growling and making noise. But he ain't got no teeth. He can't do anything. As long as I trust God. If you trust God, if you believe God, This was said recently. Everybody ain't a super Christian. You don't have to be a super Christian. You have to be a believing Christian. You just have to trust God. We don't have to be super Christians because we have a super God. He's the one that does it. We don't. He does. He knows what we are. He knows our frame. He knows we are but dust. And he never asked us to be super Christians. He asked us to trust him, believe him, depend on him, have confidence in him. That's all he asked. And if you do that, there is nothing that can destroy you. Nothing can take you out. Nothing can bring you down. That's it. I'll stop there.